the Romulans had a base known as the Vault that they used for research into Borg technology. This facility was abandoned in the chaos after the destruction of the Romulan homeworld, but intelligence suggests that the work there was far enough along that it was used to retrofit Nero's ship before it disappeared along with Ambassador Spock's vessel in the Hobus system. Long-range sensors have detected energy spikes in the Halcona system, and Starfleet Intelligence believes that someone is bringing the vault back online. We need to know who, and more importantly, we need to know if there is still Borg technology or restricted weaponry on that base. I need you to proceed immediately to the Halcona system and investigate the vault. Engage if you must, but I would prefer if you could gather the information we need without conflict. Nero. The renegade Romulan who became the antagonist of the 2009 Star Trek film and was one of the major players in the emergence of an entire parallel universe, the Kelvin Timeline. He was outfitted with a mining ship known as the Narada, and for a mining vessel it sure packed a punch, obliterating the USS Kelvin easily and facing off against vessels such as the Kelvin version of the USS Enterprise. Sure it was 154 years displaced in time, but its look and technology was so alien to the Romulan norm that there had to be an explanation. The Vault is that explanation. It is, or rather was, the Romulan's preeminent research base, a space station of immense size matched only by the scope of its undertakings. It was also to mark a fallback point for elements of the Romulan government and military wings. It was here that the relatively humble mining vessel was engineered with Borg technology and underwent a radical overhaul of controlled assimilation, turning it from a tool of industry into a weapon of vengeance. In order to avoid drawing too much attention, you need to fly under the radar, so to speak. Admiral Tanay has authorized the requisition of a shuttlecraft for you. You can fulfill the requisition in the shipyard. Once you're ready, take the shuttlecraft out to the Hakona system. If you have a runabout, fighter, or other such craft available, feel free to use it, but do not approach the system in a starship. We want to avoid the notice of whoever's in the vault. A shuttle will also be able to dock with the vault and explore the interior. When we ask what to expect from inside the vault and what it was researching, Starfleet Intelligence Officer DeSoto tells us everything that they know, which isn't much. Borg technology, aileron weapons like the ones used by Shinzon, cloaking mines and heavy graviton beams? We're not entirely sure. That's why we need eyes inside. The station itself is near a micro nebula and surrounded by a tachyon detection grid. Even a cloaked ship wouldn't be able to sneak in there. You should also expect automated defenses like turrets and cannons we haven't spotted any ships in the vicinity, fortunately. Although with Romulan cloaking, anything is possible. Starfleet will make sure to have a ship or two in range for a rapid response in case of emergency. Hopefully, though, you'll be able to keep things quiet and that won't be necessary. Of course, missions rarely go exactly as planned. We can also ask if this is a Section 31 operation, as if it would be that easy to find out. What? Oh, that mythical boogeyman organization? No, this is a standard Starfleet operation at the behest of Admiral Tanay and supported by Starfleet intelligence. In case you were wondering, that means that you should observe all regulations and don't start a war. Any questions? None. Very well. Remember, you must use a shuttlecraft, runabout, fighter, or similar small operations craft to undertake this mission. We need on-site intel from the interior of the vault. Starfleet will not clear you to enter the Hakona system otherwise. Good luck. This mission sounds daunting, but the vault is not as secure as it once was. The fracturing of the Romulan government, its exposure by Nero in 2387 and other factors leads the station to be abandoned. However, much of their research was left behind. The Star Empire has salvaged most of what it wanted, but the station itself was never scuttled and automated defences are still active, making the structure an enticing rat trap in Romulan space. We've received a requisitions token for a Type 8 shuttlecraft, but I want something with a bit more utility and room to move. 
The Romulan Republic is also sending along an agent of their own, Commander Talmera. After all, the vault is more theirs than ours, so anything we uncover needs to be in the spirit of cooperation. The Republic being a faction of Romulans who have splintered from the Star Empire to form their own government, allied with the Federation. On a side note, the runabout class ship I chose, the USS Herald, has room for a single engineering officer ability and more modifiable consoles suitable for its role as a long distance shuttle. I've always liked that the uh, runabouts have that odd mix of not quite starship, but they're bigger than a shuttle functionality. Obviously, this station isn't as abandoned as Intel suspected. Sensors are reading several Riemann ships in the area, and that's just the ones that we can spot. That station is immense! It must have taken an incredible amount of manpower and technology to build it. It's almost the size of a small moon. That's no moon I- sorry, I couldn't resist. Sensors are reading a sophisticated tachyon detection network, as well as several patrolling vessels. For an abandoned station, this facility certainly has a lot of activity. My people are experts at stealth technology. If we want to approach Unseen, we must avoid confrontation and find a way to evade or jam their sensor grid. We must assume that if we engage the ships here, they'll notify whoever is left on the station, and it may become difficult to find an entry point. So where to sneak in? The Remans, it seems, have occupied the surrounding space and are patrolling for intruders. They also have the detection grid in operation. So we'll need to deal with that first. Fortunately, as we'll soon see as we progress into the vault, a lot of its systems are automated and isolated. The station is in a state of disrepair, so we have some leniency. Still, we better be careful. Let's ask Talmira for advice. The Remans are all over this system. If we start a fight with one of the ships, we'll probably have to fight them all and there's no telling how many are cloaked here. We have a number of possible options to explore. The material requirements to make a base of that size must have been enormous. There's a lot of stellar debris here, probably remnants of asteroids or fragments from moons that were mined for raw materials. We might be able to do something useful with them. One of the large asteroids has a navigational beacon the tall Shi'ar must have placed it there for some reason. If we are an officer with a background in engineering, we can proceed to analyse the stellar materials, of course skirting the Riemann patrols. This asteroid is unusually large, and it's clearly been mined. It was probably used for raw construction materials, like most of the debris here. This particular asteroid contains pergium, titanium and uranium. It was probably tractored from a nearby system and brought here to construct hull components and power systems. We could probably cut a piece from the asteroid with our weapons for further analysis. Okay, low yield, we don't want to overdo it. Ship is under attack. Never send a soldier to do an engineer's job. Looks like the fragment has picked up a bit of residual energy from our weapon burst. It'll be radiating energy for a while. Other than that, it's just a rock. Okay, so what's option two? There's a small patch of nebula gases near the station. The static discharges in the area are highly intense. We may be able to cover an approach to the station by traveling through the nebula. And this would be risky because the nebula would cloud our tactical displays and interfere with our shields, but it would almost certainly keep the station's sensor grid from detecting us until we're right on top of them. We'll put that in the back pocket as the last option, shall we? Sensors are reading a small derelict worker ship near some of the asteroid debris. We might find helpful clues there. We find a Tavaro warbird venting plasma and completely crippled simply floating in space. So we can give it a cursory scan, and if we are a captain with a scientific background, this opens a new way to sneak into the vault. Indications are that this vessel was refitted for asteroid mining. Apparently a containment failure in the engine core led to a massive radiation surge. The engine went into emergency shutdown, but all of the couplings and injectors were burned out. 
The crew probably died due to instant radiation burns. It looks like the vessel was stripped for parts and left derelict. And the final option? All of the construction work out here must have required the use of a lot of worker shuttles and a communication booster. We might be able to dig up some information about the station's communication network if we can find a subspace relay satellite. This is the tactical officer's approach, and it doesn't take us long to locate such a satellite. It's quite nearby to the derelict ship. Looks like they left this satellite as a communications booster for their short-range worker shuttles. Fortunately for us, it's still active. Unfortunately, it's heavily encrypted. Traffic analysis shows that the network routes its communications through a series of nodes at the station's dorsal peaks. If we flood them with excessive signal, it could cause the network to be unable to handle any signal traffic, which would give us a brief window to slip in. The alerts wouldn't go off because the station would never get the signal. We'll still have to avoid the patrols and make sure we don't get too close to the station until we make the broadcast. Alright then, spam the station with interference and make a dash through the detection grid and they won't be able to sort out our intrusion from all the garbage we send their way. Now the vault itself looms from the debris of its construction, the tall spires looking like a castle against the void. It's hard to imagine the events that led up to this bastion of forbidden experiments to be abandoned, but I guess having your homeworld destroyed sort of mixes up your priorities. And we know from prior missions that the Tau Shi'ar continued the Borg experimentation under General Hakiv's purview, and the Romulans make continued use of Thaleron weapons, so I guess its usefulness simply ran its course. We don't even have an exact establishing date for the vault either, as secrecy was its greatest asset. So it could be 50 or even 100 years old, expanding with time perhaps. Whatever its age, it measures one of the biggest structures made by a contemporary power in the Alpha Quadrant. We can see the faint lances of light marking the edge of the detection grid. Approaching the Tachyon grid perimeter. If we're detected by it, that will definitely alert the Remans. Time to enact our plan. Let's make some interference. Station sensor hub jammed. We'll need to hit full impulse to cross the grid in time. If it reactivates, we miss our window to slip across unnoticed. And done. Well, from this side of the grid, we can get a sense of the scale of the structure. It goes back even further than it first appeared. The many towers and struts of this colossal vault must contain more than just labs. You could fit a shipyard in there. Living quarters too. At its prime, it must have housed an entire city's worth of people, colony even. Now, inside, perhaps we'll figure out why the Remans are trying to reactivate this facility. Although not in total control of it yet, they obviously have enough influence over its vast systems to initialise its defences. But I wonder how much they truly understand about this station. We can locate a hangar and move on in. After all, we're still undetected. Picking up some unusual energy readings. We'll need to explore the accessible interior areas and see what we can find. Looks like there's another access conduit across from us. We'll have to think three-dimensionally in here. Sensor readings are also picking up a few scattered life signs. Alright, much of this station's inner structure is hollow, leading to its expansive size. It must have been designed to allow for internal travel by Starship. The vault would easily have been able to accommodate Nero's Narada in here. The walls are lined with spires, each abundant with illuminated windows, signifying the restoration of much of the vault's power supply. Or perhaps it never failed. The central pillar is connected with spoke-like bridges to the outer walls and the cavernous interior rises below us and falls away into an abyssal depth. Expanding upwards is an equally impressive distance. We arrive at the far side of the initial chamber. We've tripped some security systems. A tractor beam and a disruptor turret open fire upon us and we're going to have to go loud to break free. The doors are a massive set of interior bulkhead doors. They're segmenting the different parts of the base. 
possibly a safety measure in case something went wrong in one of the central areas. Access appears to be controlled by use of security keys. We can disable it if we can find a code block that matches part of a security key. So, the station's sections seem like they were able to be detached to avoid any sort of cascading catastrophe. Well, that makes sense. Let's start looking for a way through them. This defense turret was hooked into part of the security network. There's a security code in its subsystem. Code block 6750. Alright, so we can begin our search for more code fragments, or a way to bypass the door. There's been no response from the Remans, so I suppose those automated turrets were on a system they don't have access to yet. Or perhaps they were just malfunctioning. Either way, we don't seem to have been spotted yet. There are signs of tremendous amounts of power being run throughout this station. I wonder what generates it all. I'm reading life signs in some of these living quarters. Interesting. We're given the option to hail them. I'm hesitant. You know, secret mission and all. Oh, you're not Riemann? They appear to be a Romulan scavenger. Well, we can assure them, intimidate them, or simply ask them about the unusual energy readings. She tells us that there's nothing left here, that the station is a derelict. Well, if it is a derelict, what are you doing here? She tells us that the vault, once its location was known and that it was abandoned by the Star Empire, became home to many refugees seeking shelter from the destruction of Romulus. People who didn't want to get involved in the Republic, the Empire, or the struggle between. People who don't have a home anywhere. We can console her with promises that the Empire will endure, but I don't want it to endure, so no. Instead, we simply offer our aid. She asks us for a shield generator, any provisions and medical supplies we can spare, and she'll tell us as much as she knows. Ever since the Remans have got here, they've been killing the survivors when they cross paths, as if they needed more difficulties. We can use the runabout's onboard replicator to synthesise her requested items. Contacting her once we're finished, we beam them over to the living quarters, and she holds up her end of the bargain. We get a sense of what her day-to-day -day life is like here, the refugees have been salvaging tech around the station to survive, probably replicators, life support, tools and the like. But many areas of the expansive station are still locked away, many years after its decommission. Other areas are just too dangerous. Automated technologies towards the core of the station, and damaging radiation on the unshielded outer towers. And now, other areas are occupied by the Remans. To get further into the station, she tells us of the force field guarded bulkheads we've already encountered, but she lets us know that she has a security bypass that can skip the checks we'd otherwise be forced to perform. Thanking her for this information, we offer to take her and the survivors with us. She denies to come. She has responsibilities here to her people, and besides, she points out that they'd probably end up being interrogated by Starfleet. She's probably not wrong. We never do get her name, but she wishes us farewell. Jolan True. We also locate some containers floating in the zero-g environment of the cavernous interior of the vault. Microgravity storage containers. Since this interior space has no artificial gravity, they're just left to float here. There's an assortment of construction materials and personal effects, including a personal access code key, 0668. We can continue to look for more fragments of the code to open the bulkhead doors, but with the bypass, we don't really need to. Still, let's finish exploring. There's a small shuttle hiding away down here that doesn't seem to want to talk to us, but apart from that, we're ready to try the doors. Normally we'd have to supply the correct code at the right times to open them, but we'll just use the survivor's override. That's it. Well done. We should be able to bypass the system and gain access now. The bulkheads slide open, revealing the umbilical-like passage to the next section, except this room is full of EPS discharges that will hurt if we try to fly through them. Along the way, there are points of interest for us to investigate. Microgravity storage crates. 
Mostly construction supplies. No weapons or unusual energy signatures. There's still power in most of the station. Some of these conduits are damaged. Keep an eye out for energy discharges. There's also a two-seater Scorpion shuttle on this landing pad. These fighters are the same sort that were flown through the corridors of the Scimitar in the film Star Trek Nemesis and are of Riemann origin. We must be getting close. Turning the bend, we come face to face with more automated security. We're going to need to take these out because we don't want these tractor turrets slowing us down as we try to navigate these force fields. I guess the EPS power leak in the corridor earlier is interfering with these fields' stability, because there are numerous breaches and intermittent openings in the barriers for us to fly through, if we time it right. And into the next chamber, just as cavernous as the first, though this one has a hub of spires and power conduits running into the central area from the ceiling above. The green glowing crossed with the rectangular design evokes a cyber-like quality, so perhaps this is a mainframe of sorts. Above us, that's a Borg sphere. The Tal Shiar must have used this base as a storage facility and research area for Borg technology. And we know that they did. This must be the amphitheatre where the Narada was converted using the reverse-engineered Borg tech, turning it from a relatively conservative mining vessel into the jagged, spiteful silhouette we see in the Kelvin timeline. It looks like the Romulans are siphoning off power and maybe data from the sphere. The Borg vessel itself makes up the ceiling of this structure and is a glow with exposed conduits like a pulsing wound. This may have been the origin of the Tau Shiar's early fascination with Borg research, but who can really blame them? As dangerous as it is, the Federation too devotes a great deal of resources to understanding and attempting to replicate many of the Borg's advancements. Let's push on. There are more navigational hazards in the way of force fields and turrets to deal with. In the Borg Sphere here, I see why the station sections were detachable now, and soon we fly into another isolated section. We immediately pick up energy emissions from the other side of this giant column. And this room looks like another hub of activity, but unlike the other sections, the lighting in here is dimmed, just the way the Remans like it. This is disturbing. We're looking at a facility used to build Thaleron weapons. If the Remans have infiltrated this base, they may be trying to secure those weapons. I wonder if this is where Shinzon got his. Ah, so our intruder finally arrives at the heart of the matter. Have you seen all that you came to see, little spy? There's a lot of dialogue here with many branching options, so I'm going to try to form it all into a relatively cohort conversation. You came to see, little spy. And who are you? Does it really matter? Call me Obasek, if a name is that important to you. And then, why are you here? That should be obvious. I intend to make use of this station to further my agenda. Your presence, however, is a bit more... curious. I expect that you are operating under the shroud of Empress Sela, whether you realize it or not. If I were an agent of the Empire, would that change things? Points for your keen observation regarding the precariousness of your situation. In short, it does not. You are an interloper, and a potential wrinkle in my plans, so you must be eliminated. Good job I'm not with the Empire, then. Did you know Sela's mother was a human? And a Starfleet officer, no less. Given Starfleet's many attempts at interference with the Romulan Star Empire over the years, it is quite obvious that at least some elements of both organizations are cooperating. Either that, or possibly your Starfleet has been tricked into doing the Empress's bidding. I was sent here to investigate some unusual readings coming from the vault. Doubtless you have discovered the source of those readings. Understand that I have little desire to unleash this sort of destruction, but my hand is forced. The Riemann people will only be liberated if we are able to make a clear and decisive stand against the Romulans. The technology of this station will allow us to do so. The Federation of Planets would assist you in that goal. Just as your Federation offered assistance to the Romulans before the supernova of Hobus and the subsequent destruction of Romulus? No. History has shown that I cannot trust in the good intentions of the Federation. An oppressed people must be ready to seize their liberty through any means available to them. 
The technology of this station has provided me with indisputable means. Even if you succeed in your revolution, you'll have to normalize relations afterwards. You're going to need allies. I will deal with the future when it arrives. For me, there is no tomorrow until my people are free. However, I respect your commitment to your position. It's a shame we are at cross purposes. Starfleet strives for peace. It's not a tool of the Star Empire. The protest will do you no good in any case. I expected interference, and I have taken steps to ensure that you will not disrupt my plan. How did you know we were coming anyway? Do you really think I would proceed with such a dangerous plan without my own sources of intelligence? Now that we have come to this exchange, it hardly matters how we arrived here. What is important now is how we proceed. You know, the use of Thaleron weapons is just going to provoke the other powers of the Quadrant. Prepared to take that risk. I strongly suspect the Federation and the Klingons will not have any desire to test our metal once all Riemann ships are armed with Thaleron weapons. Regardless, this will all be over soon enough. My plans are for liberation, not conquest. Yes, but what's the cost of your liberation going to be? I am not a Romulan, and I do not allow passion to rule my intellect. I understand the risks of my actions. While there will be strife and hardship in the future, at least it will be a future that the Riemann people are free to face for themselves. But the Galactic Powers will not permit the use of Thaleron weapons. I'm not especially interested in what you will or will not permit. My only interest is proving a point to the Romulans. My people have been hounded across the stars. We have been separated from our loved ones and had our homes destroyed. Our ships have been attacked and our warriors slain by treachery. No more. We will take the fight to them, and we will be free. Well, perhaps I can help. If I knew the nature of your plans, we could arrange a mutual agreement. Never rely on the noble intentions of spies and thieves, Captain. And you and I are either one or the other. My only intention was to determine what was amiss here on this station. You are suitably informed now, I trust. Sadly for you, one of my ships has already finished loading the Thaleron weapons. So you have become the only loose end in my operation. I despise loose ends. There's no reason we can't be civil. Neither of us own this vault. Let's just talk this out. I appreciate your level-headedness in an unfortunate situation. As you must have surmised, though, I have already located the Thaleron weapons that I need. One of my ships has completed transporting them. And soon we shall make our first strike against the Romulans in our war for liberation. Sadly, we cannot trust any outside powers to ally with us. Our freedom must be won by our own hands. The Federation will always promote freedom, but I cannot condone the use of Thaleron weaponry. I do empathize with your plight, though. Your honesty under pressure is refreshing. Lesser beings would be scheming to learn my plans or begging for mercy. Your intellect and discretion do you credit. Just so you understand, the use of such barbaric weapons will have lasting repercussions. I will deal with the future when it arrives. For me, there is no tomorrow until my people are free. However, I respect your commitment to your position. It's a shame we are at cross purposes. I am afraid our time is at an end. My associates have already finished loading the Thaleron weapons that we need, and I have other operations to manage. I think we both know what happens now. May your death be quick and valorous. With that, Obisek, the leader of the Riemann Separatists, orders a squadron of Scorpion fighters to attack us. The runabout can handle these miniature ships easily, just targeting them is the hard part. But now we need to make our escape. We're in the heart of his territory and our cover is blown. It's only going to get messier the longer we stay. Fleeing the way we came in, we're hounded by the Scorpions. We'll have to take them out. They won't give up pursuit, and they're much faster than us. They attempt to stop us leaving through these bulkhead doors, but we blast through. Ah, oh, they've deployed a lock on the doors. We're going to have to blast it off, but... What the... A bloody Mogai Heavy Warbird got in here! We do not want to engage that. Chances are it would rip us apart. We can weather a few hits, but exchanging fire is a sure path to destruction. Let's just get out of here. Alright, alright, I don't think it can fit through those doors. Oh, I 
yes, yes it can. Okay, but hopefully it's going to take longer to navigate those intermittent shields. Let's just not hang around to find out, eh? Alright, so we're into the last section of the facility. Who would have thought escaping a place called the Vault would be so difficult? Oh, and they've placed a Tavaro Light Warbird waiting for us. It's probably our match in terms of firepower, and it's right where we need to go. So, I guess we're going through it. There's no option to run away in here, and I think that Mogai is still on our trail. Must stop Obasek's ship. They cannot be allowed to possess Thaleron weapons. We can use the subspace booster satellite outside the station to send a message to Starfleet as soon as we're clear of the interior. But Obasek's warship will almost certainly attack us when we do. We'll have to survive long enough for reinforcements to arrive. Reinforcements have arrived and are just past that nebula. We don't have much time. We need to meet with our allies and stop that ship. <laughs> well, that was quick. Tamara's concerns seemed to be for nothing. Let's go meet our allies. We are now in the micro nebula. The USS Lassa is here and preparing to engage the Riemann ship. However, the fight takes place in the nebula we spotted upon entering the system. This cloud prevents our shields from being raised and severely messes with our visual acuity, our comms, and our navigational maps. It's a smokescreen, where fighters suddenly become more threatening, as they no longer have to contend with the shielding of powerhouses like the Galaxy class, so it's up to us to engage those fighters and keep the Lhasa safe while it exchanges fire with the Remans. That was a big explosion, I hope those Thaleron weapons were inert, or we may start getting rather crispy. That was quite an explosion. Probably from the Thaleron weapons carried aboard the ship. We're going to leave the system under high warp to draw up any reinforcements that might come looking. Suggest you return to Federation space. Thank you, Lhasa. Good hunting and stay safe. As for us, it's time to bail with our gathered intel. Well, we need to rendezvous back to Starbase 39 and report into Admiral Tanay. We need to get the armager back too. Let's hope the Lhasa doesn't run into too much trouble playing decoy for us. It was quite badly beaten up by the Dederodex. But what we found out at the vault was enlightening, tying in some loose ends. Like the destination of those Thaleron triggers that turned up during the Wasteland story arc. They must have been being shipped to Obersek. Well, the vault itself, now falling apart, is a mix of isolated failing systems, locked doors, irradiated danger zones, active turrets, and who knows how many abandoned and automated experiments. Clearly the Romulans didn't want to scuttle a potential archive of information, but they never returned, so in their absence, scavengers, survivors, and opportunists have moved in, and some making it their home, eking out a desperate existence built on the rubble of scientific discoveries. I've taken a preliminary look at your logs, and it seems that things went a bit unexpectedly. I have a feeling this isn't the last time we'll be seeing the vault. The Riemann commander you encountered is definitely a major player in the disintegration of the Romulan Star Empire. I'm going to send the information you gathered about him over to an old colleague of mine, Dr. Maximilian Peters, for analysis. If this Riemann is a leader in their separatist movement, we'll have to deal with him again. And hopefully, Dr. Peters can work up a psychological profile for him and a sociological analysis of the Separatists. Our next step will be to decode the signal intelligence and go through any remnants left from the ship that was destroyed near the vault. Now that we know that the Remans were hoping to use Thaleron weapons, we need to figure out their target location. Right now, Starfleet knows far too little about a civil war in the making, but it'll take time to sift through all of the data. Keep in touch. Starfleet will notify you when we have a lead. Oh, and thanks for the good work. Excellent work. 
We need to learn more about the conflict between Obasek and the Romulans. Sila's forces may indeed be hounding the Remans, but the use of Thaleron weapons is unacceptable. Not even the Klingons or the Breen will stoop to such barbarism. Starfleet Intelligence will be working to decode the list of possible targets you acquired from the base's databanks. The next step may be to investigate these sites and find out why the Remans want to destroy them. Obisek needs to be stopped. I'm all for prying the Remans away from the oppressive clutches of the Star Empire, but doing so with the use of the horrific Thaleron radiation weaponry? Not good. It won't allow for any stable Reman government if they're associated with such barbarianism. Something Obisek seems to be aware of, but unwilling to consider. The Remans have been a slave race for most of their existence, but but we'll explore more on them in detail next time. So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me next video as we continue to explore the ever-expanding narrative of Star Trek Online as we delve even deeper into the Romulan mysteries and beyond. So thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>